This video is a small section from our Sound Operators training course. The course covers all aspects of sound operation in an audio-video format. Learn more about our training materials in the training section on our website, www.alectrosystems.com. This video explains the relationship between and effective use of the mixer gain or trim dial and the channel fader. We'll start with the gain and channel fader. Each input channel on a mixer has a gain dial, sometimes called trim, at the top, and a channel fader or volume control at the bottom. These two controls work together. You will notice that on the fader, the numbers start at infinity at the bottom and decrease as you move up the scale. This is because the fader actually acts as an attenuator. The zero on the graph represents no attenuation. As you move the fader down, it decreases the volume by increasing the attenuation. The numbers refer to decibels of attenuation. The 10 below the zero means that you have attenuated or reduced the gain by 10 decibels. By the time you get to the bottom, you have reached infinite attenuation, which means there will be no volume. The 10 above the zero means you have added 10 decibels of gain. You will also notice that the numbers in the middle and top of the scale are farther apart than those at the bottom. This is particularly evident between infinity and 30. Moving the fader between these two points results in a huge change in gain. Depending on your particular mixer, the distances between the other sets of numbers might be fairly uniform. It is best to use the center part of the fader during sound system operation. This will give you better resolution, making it easier to control the sound. In order to do this, you need to adjust the gain control at the top, so that the channel fader is operating in the center area. Here's a little trick I sometimes use, which actually accomplishes two things. First of all, plug the microphone that you're going to use into the mixer channel. Turn the gain control at the top down low or counterclockwise. Now bring the channel fader up to the zero line. Very slowly increase the gain control until you start to hear ringing. This is the beginning of feedback. Now turn the gain control down very slightly and slowly until the ringing goes away. There's a delay, so be very gentle with it. Once this is completed, you will probably find that operating with the fader around 10 to 15 decibels below zero will provide a comfortable level of sound. This is a perfect range to be in. You have also set your limit to zero decibels. This helps you too because you know that zero is the approximate safe limit before feedback. If you need to get the maximum amount of gain from this channel, you need to be very careful as you approach or exceed the zero level. After making the above adjustment, the only reason you might want to decrease the gain control at the top is if the clip light flashes for that channel. This might happen if the person using the microphone is very loud. Once the gain control is set for a particular type of microphone, you are not likely to need to change it again. Learn about all your mixer controls and how to use them effectively with our Sound Operators training course. Visit the training section of our website for details www.electrosystems.com